Dear students, in this module, we will continue to study the needleman wunsch algorithm. This will be the second module in the series. You already know that in the dot matrix alignment uh, diagrams, the diagonals represented alignments between the top and the left-sided sequences. And of course, you could have multiple such alignments as we saw in our previous examples. So the point is, how to make an optimal combination of these alignments. To better phrase the question and help you understand what we are going to do later, I will give you this example. So this is what we were studying previously and we already saw that these are the diagonals that represent the alignment and here was an example which did not have a diagonal. So if you want to consider diagonals only, then this match between the C will be ignored. Okay, so if you want to align these sequences, then this can be one possible alignment. The green corresponds to this alignment. Next, you could have another combination of alignments wherein you have this portion of the sequence in A and B align very nicely and as you can see it can be represented like that. Next there can be another case where only C and G align and this is represented by this diagonal. So in this very simple example where you just had three diagonals you could have so many combinations. But if the sequence is long, the number of combinations can grow very fast. So this is where needleman wunsch algorithm is very useful. So as I just mentioned, once you have these combinations coming from the matrix, the alignments need to be evaluated for the optimal combination of the diagonals. So let's start the needleman wunsch algorithm once again with a simple example. So here, you already know that the diagonal move is a match, left and top moves are gaps. So this is your diagonal move, this is your top and this is your left. So in case you want to consider calculating this position, then you need to evaluate the top, the diagonal and the left. So, let's start by looking at the indices of each of these positions. So, let's say if you want to calculate Cij, where i is this position, the index, the j is this position, then the upper position will be Ci minus 1, j. So, i minus 1 is essentially one position higher i minus 1 and j minus 1 is one position higher and one position towards the left so therefore this becomes the diagonal so the diagonal therefore has coordinates i minus 1 and j minus 1 for the left the coordinates are i and j minus 1 only so therefore if you want to compute cij then you need to have these three elements with you. This necessitates the requirement that you know this position if you want to calculate Cij. So let's start computing the matrix. The initial condition for computing the matrix is that Ci0, that is the entire vertical column, is equal to the index multiplied by the gap penalty. So we can have a gap penalty depending on our choice and therefore it is represented here as a variable gamma. So let's start filling it. So C00 will be 0, C10 will be minus gamma, yeah, minus 1 multiplied by gamma. 
so C two zero will be minus two multiplied by gamma, so that's minus two gamma and minus three gamma minus four gamma, so on and so forth for your entire sequence like that. Similarly, for this axis we continue using the same initial condition, but j is the index that is used. So minus 1 gamma, now j is 2, so minus 2 gamma, here j is 3, so minus 3 gamma, and here j is 4, therefore minus 4 gamma. So in this way, you have computed the initial conditions for the entire matrix, and now you have the first row which is filled, you have the first column that is filled. If you look carefully, then you are in a position to compute this element because you already know the top element, the diagonal element and the left element if gamma is given to you. So in this way you can compute this element as shown here. So if you have 0 minus gamma minus gamma and if you know A and A would match then you need to compute the maximum from these three conditions. The maximum value from these will be considered towards calculating this value. So let's see how it is computed. If you want to compute Cij that is here, then you take the maximum of the i minus 1, j minus 1, that is 0, plus something that we will discuss in the next slide, and the top element, the left element here, and then the top element here. So you compute each one of them. And then you take the maximum value by looking at each of these three values. Okay, so next you would want to know something more to compute this. As I just mentioned, gamma is your gap penalty, alpha will be your match reward. So if an amino acid matches with another amino acid, if a nucleotide matches with another nucleotide, you give it a plus alpha. However, if there is a mismatch, then you can give a minus beta. In this way, you can compute each one of these. So here is your diagonal, the previous diagonal. Here is your plus alpha or minus beta, as shown here. And here are your left and top elements. So you can easily compute the maximum and assign it to the element in the matrix that you were trying to compute here. So in this way, you can complete the matrix by looking at the maximums element by element like that. The only thing to remember is that you need to consider each one of these conditions. So in conclusion, the top, the left, and the diagonal positions are used to compute the current position. And once you compute them, then the maximum of each one of these is placed in the element that you are trying to compute. And the matrix is computed progressively, and you fill each position one by one until all the positions are filled up.